Good morning. We are glad that you are here with us this morning. What a beautiful spring morning. Great day, good day to be here, a good day to be at McGill. Kyler says so. If Kyler Scaglione says it's a good day, it's a good day. That's right. We're glad. And we hope that you all feel at home and a part of all that we do here at McGill Baptist. If you'll look at the back of your bulletin, just several announcements we want to remember. Uh, Mandy Ashley is our Deacon of the Week, and we appreciate her ministry with us, and she'll be leading the Hebrew Scriptures. The flowers in the sanctuary today are given in honor of LaRue and Phyllis Costley on their 70th wedding anniversary by their boys, Jim, Brian, and Eric, and we salute them and appreciate uh, that. The senior adults of the church will have a time of fellowship. Uh, that's next Sunday from 5 to 7. It's going to be hosted by our youth. That's going to be a wonderful time. And, you know, uh, if you're just approaching seniorhood, just jump on in. The water's fine. That's going to be a great time together. Paul. Paul. You heard it from Paul. You determine if you're senior adult or not. And it's good to be. All right. Uh, scholarship applications are available outside of Paul's office. Please pick one up. They're due back by May the 5th. Uh, we'll have them uh, present the scholarships on Graduate Sunday, June the 2nd. The yard sale is two weeks from yesterday. So all that wonderful stuff that you can do without, uh, that you need to get rid of, bring on to the church, and we'll have a good time. Uh, we had a good, uh, yesterday was the last of the UNCC training, and we've had a good group. Uh, UNCC is going to give us $1,500 to be tra uh, for that training. But next week, we need the 30 people to help at their spring football game. Uh, our uh, shirts are the light blue shirts, the beige hats, and jeans or khakis, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, but we need you to let us know so we can get the credentials. Uh, let... Uh, just let me or Jamie, Jamie and Eric Pope are going to uh, lead that up for us, uh, but let me know or them know. Uh, we'll take the bus uh, so you don't have to do that long walk. Uh, 30 people, you can do it. We need you, and uh, we had fun, and we appreciate everybody that has helped. Again, it's good to see you today. It's good to be at McGill. This is the day that the Lord has made, and what can we do but rejoice and be glad in it? Let's greet each other. Good morning and welcome to our April 14th worship service in McGill Baptist Church. This morning our pastor Steve Ayers will be preaching the sermon, Follow Me, which comes from John 21, verses 1 through 19. As our pastor said, uh, Mandy, uh, um, Mandy Ashley will be our Deacon of the Week, and she will be, be giving our Old Testament lesson and also our morning prayer. As I go back to worship, and welcome. Century 
sanctuary bells with the morning prelude when in our music God is glorified. This morning as we gather for worship, if you'll join me in reading responsively our call to worship. Sing, all people of God, sing the good news. Sing in every land, in every tongue, sing the good news. Sing 
sing in heaven and on earth. Sing the good news. Sing, O people of God. And our first hymn this morning is This Is My Father's World, hymn number 43. Would you stand please as we sing together? Ashley. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading today is from Psalm 30, and I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together today and worship at McGill. We thank you for the church leaders you have provided for us and for their service and ministry to our church. We thank you for this beautiful springtime that reminds us of our new life in you and your unending love for your children. Lord, we are grateful that we can come to you with our concerns and our praises. You know what is on our hearts even before we speak. 
we are reassured that no matter what our circumstances may be, we may still experience your joy in the morning. Fill each of us with your peace and encouragement. Help us to praise you through whatever our day may bring so that others will see you living in us. God, we know you're at work in our lives and through our lives. We ask that you continue to prepare us to serve you and show your compassion and love to all your people with a true joy that only you can supply. In your name we pray. Amen. Our children will come forward. Paul will meet them on the steps. What is this? Okay. They go fishing. Oh, about fell down. You ready? in and see if any fish were on, was in the net. No. Well, they fish. One? How many? Zero. zero. You're right. They caught zero fish. Well, the sun was starting to come up and they were frustrated because they didn't catch any fish. And there was a man on the shore and he hollered to them, Hey, have you caught any fish? And they said, No, we've not caught anything. He said, and they had been throwing it on the left side of the boat. I don't know why they'd fished on the left side of the boat all night. But the man said, throw it out on the right side. So they thought, this guy's crazy. So they threw it out on the left side, on the right side of the boat. You know how many fish they had? 153. Wow. And so they pulled all the fish in, and as they got towards shore, they realized it was Jesus. They were so excited to see the risen Lord that they sat down and this, they cooked their fish and they had bread. They didn't have Bojangles biscuits. They just had bread. Okay. <laughs> but they had fish that they caught and bread. Mmm, smell. I don't have any biscuits. Just smell. Mmm. Oh. And they ate and ate and ate and talked with Jesus. That was exciting. Just think what they had missed if they haven't, they didn't listen to what Jesus said. So that's what I want you to do. Sometimes we miss opportunities if we don't listen to what Jesus tells us to do. Can we pray together? Dear God, help us to be ready for the great things you have for us. Amen. Sorry, I don't have any biscuits for you. Just the smell. The youth ate all those. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 52, He Leadeth Me. Appreciate my good friend Kay Yates being with us today, Kay playing the organ. And uh, so let's all stand as we sing our offertory hymn, hymn number 52.
Would you pray with me, please? Our Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for all the blessings that you have given us throughout this week. And we come to a time when we give a little bit back to you. Would you please bless it and multiply it so that we can share your love with Cabarrus County and with the world? In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Prayer of Thanksgiving, Donna Duncan. Now for the morning anthem, Jesus Pay It All, sung to choir with feature soloist Robin Harrell. Thank you again for joining us here at McGill Baptist Church.
Now our pastor, Steve Ayers, with the morning message. How beautiful. Thank you. I'm always reminded what a unique and wonderful church family we have. This morning, walking around the Sunday school just reminded me of that again. And even now, I'm a little hoarse and raspy. Uh, Friday, Valerie, our daughter in Raleigh, needed uh, me to uh, babysit Brendan at the zoo. There's nothing like spending the day at the zoo and getting pollen all of you. But my ENT doctor's here, and my family care physician's here, so I'm in good shape. And my dentist is here, but his prescription is always saying, crown him, crown him. <laughs> I'm working on that one. But as I walked around the building this morning, it was just so neat. I walked by that hall, and there was Monty Cosby, 101 years old, teaching Sunday school. Isn't that cool? And uh, she said she was a little rusty, sure. <laughs> but what, what a neat thing. And then we, we go on down the hall, and uh, Rabbi Barbara Tita was sharing uh, the book of Genesis with Bruce's Sunday school class. And, and what a wonderful thing it is for us to remember that the, uh, the Jewish congregation that meets here and then they share with us their perspective and, and how we serve God together. But that's one of the things that make you unique. And then I, I walk on through the hall and then I'm reminded by a sign in the nursery as I look and see my grandson Miles uh, in a bad position. And above him is a little sign that says, and they shall all be changed. And he was. We have a wonderful family. And how wonderful it is that we share that. And then I was reminded uh, that it was 10 years ago this week, and it'll be actually next Sunday, that Lauren and Miles were the first couple to be married in this building. And I was thinking at the time, I was so worried because... Uh, uh, the first one sets a lot of precedence, and uh, Lauren and Miles wanted dancing and on music and a live band and everything, and I thought, oh, God, we're Baptists. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, uh, we rented the tent because that was the simplest thing to do. And it rained all of Holy Week that year. It just rained and rained and rained, and it was a mud pit outside. But, you know, our church is so gracious, and it said, we're, <laughs> we live in this century <laughs> And we brought everything inside, and after the service, and it was a beautiful service. Uh, you helped us do the magic of turning this building into a reception hall, and we danced. Like the psalm said, we took, the morning was turned into dancing, and uh, it was such a neat thing. And then there was Marshall Urie, who danced with Lauren, and all of her kindergarten class danced with her. But Marshall danced with her, and Marshall was worried that he was married to her because he danced with her. But that's what makes us who we are. The scripture this morning comes from John, and it is a family breakfast, if you will, because we are a church family. John 21, verses 1 through 19. This is actually, I told the 830 group, my favorite gospel is probably Luke. Uh, I, I like Luke because it has the prodigal son and it has the good Samaritan and it has some other things that the others don't. But this is my favorite story in John. John just writes differently. He's the last of the gospel writers and he just does it different. He has a different purpose. But this story is just so cool. Listen to it if you can with fresh ears. If you, don't need, if you don't have fresh ears, see Jamie. She'll take care of you. But try to hear, hear the story. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of the disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. 
just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat dragging the net full of fish. For they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. May God add his blessing through the reading and the hearing of his word. And may we each deep down in our lives find the courage and the strength to follow God's will in our lives. May we pray. Our Father, we are thankful and grateful that we can come to you in this place, in this time. We're thankful that we can be your family, that we are your children, that you've called us together and you've called us for a purpose. You've called us to be your church. And as a family, we, we reach out this day to those that are hurting, to those that are in sorrow, to those that are in the hospital. We continue to lift up Doris Rogers in the hospital even now. We remember Babe Ramsour and we Hope that he'll be able to go to the Bryan Center after dialysis tomorrow. We remember Lizzie Griggs Fowler and, and she continues to struggle. We thank you for their lives and their witness and we thank you that they're part of our family. We're thankful that we can call upon you. You know our deepest fears, our greatest doubts. You know us. We confess that we are not perfect people. We have sinned. We have fallen short of the very things that you would have us to be. But we know, because you have told us so, that your grace is more than sufficient and that your love is greater than our sin. 
and that you love us. And because you love us, you expect us to love others. You expect things of us. Oh Lord, help us to find the courage to do those very things. To be the very people that we need to be. Give us a heart that is more understanding. Give us a mind that is more reaching. Give us hands that are far more caring. Help us to do the things that we need to do. We pray for a world this day that is hurting, a world that is torn by violence, a world that is torn by greed, a world that can seem so many times heartless. But you have a heart for this world, and so must we. And so we remember once more how you once taught us to pray. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is a wonderful story. It is a story full of humor and insight. It is a story full of surprise. It is a story that reminds us of our humanity. It's a story that reminds us that God is in our world. The disciples still don't know what to make of everything. They have experienced, at least briefly, a glimpse, a sight, an understanding of, of the risen Lord. They have touched him. They have felt him. They have known that something is happening, but they still have trouble recognizing him. They don't know what to make of the situation. And so there they are. Simon Peter. You can just see the scene. They're just sitting around, and, and they don't know. And uh, what do you do when you don't know what you do? You go fishing. They said, Simon Peter says, I think I'm going to go fishing. He's a fisherman. This is the thing that he knew to do. This is the thing where he felt not only vocation, but certainly he felt a sense of peace. And he says, I'm going fishing. If a person says, I'm going fishing, I guarantee there are three or four more that says, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. And so they do. They get out and they fish all night. And the worst thing that can ever happen to one that fishes is they catch nada, nothing, zilch. And to make it worse, as the morning comes up, they have spent the night, nothing in their nets. They look on the shore and there is this figure that they can't make out. And he says, children, you haven't caught anything, have you? That's a pretty negative question. And they had to say, no. And then because there's an expert in every crowd, you can always find an expert. Sometimes we call them consultants. An expert is usually a, 20, a person that's 30 miles away from home who is an ex and has been and is a drip, a drip under pressure. That's an expert. You can quote me on that. Anyway, somebody from the shore says, let me tell you what to do. And he says to them, cast your nets on the right side. Well, the miracle of the thing is they did it. And when they did, the net was full. Of course, we're reminded of another story in the gospel that's so similar to this. And I think in that moment, they were also reminded that is their purpose now in life to become fisher of people, as Jesus had told them. It is their purpose in life that will be far from these nets. There will be different nets that they cast. And it will be a net where they cast it. And when you cast a net, you're not fishing as Paul was for a, a bass in this place. You're not casting a lure. You're taking everything in. You catch it all. You know, we, we can't just cast our nets for certain things, certain people. 
The love of God is not contained that way. We cast the net for everybody. So they were reminded in that moment of their purpose. And then the neatest story that we have, Peter decides he can go swimming because he wants to get and see Jesus. John says, it's the Lord. And the first thing Peter does is put his clothes on and then jump in the water. That's funny. That's just a funny scene. But it reminds us of the impulsiveness of our lives. And he swims to shore and the others take the boat. They get to shore. And Jesus is cooking. He says, bring your fish. And I guess they have fish and ships. I don't think the Bojangle biscuits were anywhere near. I'm always reminded when we were in New Jersey, we served in Cape May, and we had a lot of people from the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And they would eat fish every day for breakfast. It was just what they did. And I always thought about breakfast in Galilee in this story. They eat the fish. They share the meal with Jesus. It's a different kind of communion. And then Jesus calls Peter over. And he says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter's always the first to speak. He's all the one that keeps his foot in his mouth. Peter's always brash. Peter says, you know, Lord, you know that I do. He said, feed my lambs. That reminds us right away. Jesus is reminding us again of our vocation, of our calling, of who we are as Christians. If we're going to be a part of the church, what we must do, there are responsibilities. If we love Jesus, we have to do something. It's not enough to just sit around and say, I love you, God, I love you, God, I love you. We have to put, as we say, feet to our prayers. We have to put works to our faith. If we say that we love Jesus, then we feed the lambs. We feed the lambs as, as we do in a very concrete way, as we collect food the first Sunday of every month, as we are about to do, as we plant the community garden, as we grow food for people who cannot grow it. And in more intangible ways, we feed the lambs when we share in this building, in this community, when we learn about the love of God and we take that love of God out into our world. We put flesh on our faith. It is a requirement. It is that which we do automatically. And Peter knew that. Then Jesus asked him again, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he used a different word for love. And, and when I was at Princeton, we made a big deal of that. It's a different word in the Greek. And we deconstructed the story and this and that. But we've learned since then that if we're not careful. We miss the point. But Jesus was saying there's lots of different ways to love. But they're all really the same. They all come from the heart, and they all come from the heart of God. And that's what matters. And so he asked him a second time if he loved him. And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. And then Jesus asked, a third time. And when Peter heard those words the third time, it says he was hurt. Because the words the third time cut him to the quick. When he heard it that third time, he, he realized and the guilt in his life swept all over him. And he realized that, yes, indeed, he was the one that denied Jesus the three times on the night of his betrayal and his arrest. 
that he was the one that would curse the very name of Jesus. He was the very one that tried to flee the hardest and the fastest and yet stay close. He knew. And he was hurt. Because he felt it. Repentance sometimes hurts. And he knew what he must do. As Jesus said again, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. And then Jesus looked at him. And this one that is so obstinate, this one that is so powerful in his thoughts and his ideas, this one that is so very stubborn and brash and real. He says, when you were younger, you could do just about what you wanted to do. But the time is coming when you will go where you do not want to go. John tells us, Jesus was telling him how he would die to glorify God. And today, if you go to St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, at the very center of it, you look down and you look down into a grotto type cave, there is said to be Peter's bones. Whether they are or not, I do not know. But I know the love that Peter found because he followed Jesus is there. I know the power that he found in his life from that moment on when he did the very things that God would have him to do. I know that when he discovered that he was a forgiven person and he lived his life out of that forgiveness, that he went where he did not want to go. And he suffered the things that he did not want to suffer, but he stayed true to his Lord and his life. And Jesus simply said to him after that, Follow me. And I think that is exactly what he's still telling his church. To follow him. And how do we follow Jesus? How do we love Jesus? How do we love God? We feed the lambs. We tend the sheep. We feed the flock. But it's not just this flock. For God so loved the world that he sent his son. And because God so loved the world, so must the church. And if we are to follow Jesus, we don't just sit around and get happy. We get to work. We follow him into the world. We live as he would have us to live. We love as he would have us to love. We do the things that count and are important. We're not perfect people. We grow astray. We do this. We do that. But God's forgiveness calls us to make a difference. Peter made all the difference. And each one of you by the very grace of God in your heart and in your life as you follow him. You, you will make the difference. Jesus said, follow me. May we pray. Our Father, may we somehow deep down inside each of us find the courage to live out our lives with your purpose with your love, with your care, will we find what we need to be and how we must be it. We're thankful for a church family. We're thankful that we can come together and worship. 
but now we will take our worship out into the world, out into the highways and the byways where you have told us to go. And there we will follow you. Oh Lord, give us the strength. Give us the courage. Give us the will. Give us the passion and compassion to do it. Because we love you. And you love all of us. We pray in the name of the one. The name of the one who is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is Footsteps of Jesus, hymn number 483. And our invitation is very simple, to follow Jesus. To follow him by giving him your heart and your life, knowing that he is Lord of all. Our invitation is to follow him and become a part of our fellowship, perhaps, a part of our family, that we may work here together to the good that God has for us to do. Our invitation is to open your hearts to God's love, however that comes, as we stand and sing Footsteps of Jesus. And we're so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this day. We hope that you feel a part of our family and the work of God that we do here. This is a full week in the church. We have, uh, Lindsay said, we have youth choir, all the choirs, the youth. Everything's normal this week. Normal for us, anyway. Uh, so keep that in mind. Hot dogs on Friday, a good week, a good day. We're glad, again, that you are here. But now we are the church. And the church goes. It goes out into the world to serve. We are not to be served. We are the servants. And we go to that world that God has loved. And we will love too. We go with eyes that will see, ears that will hear, 
and arms that will reach out. We go because that's who we are. Feed the flock, tend the lambs, feed the sheep. You are the church. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We thank you again for joining us for our April 14th worship service at McGill Baptist Church. McGill Baptist Church is at 5300 Papa Chant Road in Concord, North Carolina. Our phone number is 704-788-1180 and our website address is www.mcgillbaptist.org. We thank you again for joining us and have a blessed day.